Fresh after Singles Awareness Day, we're going into a singles schmodown competition. Yeah, that was nicely done. Thank you. Yeah. What's going on, guys? We're the Cine Fanatics. My name is Chris Adams. And I'm Robert Adams. And yes, we are back with another schmodown reaction. It's two new rookies today. Paul Oyama versus Brendan Meyer. Which, a little bit of a uh, little bit of backstory on these guys. Brendan Meyer is an actor most known for his role in that Netflix show, The OA. And, oh, wow. <laughs> and Paul Oyama comes from the fan leagues, the same fan leagues that birthed Chance Ellison, which I believe was the Full Metal Trivia. I have a weird image in my head now. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. So... He's got a whole lot of pull behind him right now because he's got the entire fan league just rooting for him at this point. Whereas you got Brendan Meyer, who's fresh on the scene, has been a Schmodown fan for quite a while, has even been invited out to sit in the studio, check out the Schmodowns firsthand. Uh, Christian gave him a shot this time, so we'll see what we'll see what he knows. So as far as who we're going with, I would probably say I'm going to probably side with Paul. Um, just because yeah. he's a part of the fan leagues. We know what he's capable of. There's a lot siding with him, so I think it's he of the two, he's probably the safer bet at this point since we don't obviously know what Brendan can put up. Yeah. Quite yet. So we might be like surprised. Brendan may just come in with just a... A, Fire to it, fury! Like a living Wikipedia page and know everything about every movie. Mine was more exciting. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, so let's go ahead and get into this. Let's see what these two guys can do. Yeah. Come on, Roxy. Come in! Hey, am I interrupting a photo shoot? No, it's okay. just my selfie. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, I don't know if you've heard, but Emma is now the commissioner, which means she can no longer manage because it's a conflict. Right. And this is what I was thinking. Doing, during the free for all stuff that you managed me and Slater, you are an amazing manager. You were really hands on. Thank you. And especially in our last matches, you really kept us focused and did everything a really great manager should. And I'm without a manager now, so I was wondering if maybe would you be interested in it? I would love to. I, I honestly was waiting. I wanted to steal you from Emma, but I, I know that you love her so much. It's, I no, no, we she, we just met with her. We all gave her our blessing. I mean, she should take it. That's well, yeah, absolutely. Oh, fan, oh, great. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. We have to get signed. Called it. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Where is he? I don't know. In the alley somewhere, probably. We'll they, find him. Yeah, yeah, vaping somewhere. Yeah, vaping. All right, let's go. Awesome. But are they getting the Shire Wolves yeah. also? Yeah, I think that was assumed. That was implied since Emma. Called it. Yeah, good, good call on that. Yeah. Uh, so it's no longer gonna be the Five Club. So what are they gonna change the name to? Night at the Roxybury? Stryer Stars. I like mine. I don't. <laughs> ah, Danielle. Yeah. I was like, Christian looks a little different this week. <laughs> I was told that she was gonna be on the desk. Before we get to the rookies here that are going to be on the desk at some point, Danielle, so excited to have you part of the league. We've been buddies for a long time. You're making your debut. Do you have any words of? I'm just about to ask if she's been a part of on the desk before. Not yet. Be First time on the question desk. I would say any advice I would give to these new rookies is, you know, you got to bring your best when you're coming into the Schmodown. I feel like everyone understands and respects the game. Make sure that you have respect for this game, and yeah, the game will love you back. See, I would say right legibly. Now, let's talk about the <laughs> podcast whippersnappers that are going to try to come in here and steal some glory from the movie Trivia Schmodown. you got Brendan Meyer. Now, Brendan Meyer, a lovable kid from Canada, very pinchable cheeks even into his adult years. He's been on TV. He's been in movies. We've seen him in shows like The OA. He was in JTE's favorite movie of all time, The Guest. Uh, also, he was in The Tooth Fairy with he, The Rock. He was in The Tooth Fairy with The Rock? He was in Tooth Fairy with The Rock. I did my research. Well, I need to ask him about that. Now, Brendan Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an unknown, but he came in and was a big fan of the league, and so he watched a lot of it. He was begging the chairman for some sort of shot, and he said, okay, kid, you got to be patient, wait your turn. He came in here, virtually every match we taped, he knew a lot of the answers, he was keeping score with himself, and he is ready for his shot. On the other side of the ledger, sitting in the favorite chair today, is 
going to be primetime Paul Oyama. Now, Paul, he also comes from a family. He thinks that he's even better than Chance Ellison, who made quite a splash coming from the family last oh, year. Oh, I hope that's We're a rivalry that forms. some kids to the major leagues here today, Danielle. Oh, this is incredible. I wonder if they've played. Yeah, I'm going to have to research this, but I wonder if they've played in the fan league but already. It's a completely different game when sure. you're here underneath the lights, the schmodown. So let's see how they do. It's the white hot, bright spotlight in our home studios here in Cincinnati, Ohio. So excited to welcome both these competitors. That's not correct. Let's see what each one had to say pre game. It's definitely Idaho Falls. Yeah. Why Idaho Falls? First, trying to think of some obscure. Prime time. Paul Oyama. Hey, I was born. Brendan, and, like I said, uh, I'm here to play a little <laughs> showdown. So, as some of you know, Chance Ellison was the first fan from the fan leagues to ever compete in the showdown. But look, I've been grinding in the fan leagues for a long time, and I should have been the first person here. The only reason that he left is because he was scared we were about to play our first match against each other one on one. There you go. Answer that question. Went into the showdown, and I went running right after. I am definitely known among all of my friends as that guy who knows way too much about movies, so I'm very excited to get the chance to finally put it on record and uh, hopefully impress. And here I am, they got me going against an actor and I'm, I'm really excited. Oh, it's the kid from The Tooth Fairy? And yeah, there have been a lot of great actors who have competed in the league. Sam Levine is definitely someone that I would love to emulate. Potentially, if I can get into that situation, I, I can bring it home, but Under the Lights is a totally different story, so I'm excited to get the chance. I'm 17 and 0 lifetime. So, you know, I'm not really worried about the stage, about the event. I'm ready to make some noise in this league. All right, prime time. I know it's gonna be a great match. I know you're gonna come in hot. I know you're gonna try to get in my head. This wasn't something I didn't think I could be great at. I wouldn't be here. I would have stayed watching. So get ready. I'm ready to go. They're fired up. That is some, that is some really good rookie trash talk right there. Well, you see that because that's why they call him primetime because the kid, I, I would say confident, very borderline cocky. What's your read on Paul? Is he getting a little too big for his britches already? You know, I appreciate the confidence. I think that you have to be confident coming into this game, but you know, like I said Mets earlier, you have more. to have respect for this yeah, game. You have rookies. to have respect uh -huh. for your competitors. Um, let's just hope that he can put his it's money where his week. mouth is. And uh, Brendan, such mm -hmm. a nice kid. I would accept a newspaper With a weekend in the middle onto my front porch, but I think he knows a lot about moving trivia too so we're about to get it on here in the studio before we get to that let's talk about some all-time highlights from these two competitors uh, we don't have many but <laughs> you know, brendan's been in the tooth fairy so that's pretty awesome yeah that's pretty I mean, i've never done a movie with the rock i mean look brendan is sat yeah, in a corner in a studio <laughs> and he's a lot of right to himself and and primetime Paul Yama, he does have a track record from the fan league. And I love that the fan leagues have become like triple A ball, where, yeah, maybe they're not in the majors yet, but they know how to play. They know the rules of engagement. He actually defeated Chance Elson in a team match in the fan league. So we'll see what he can bring right. to the table here today. I am feeling pretty good about everything, Danielle. Match. You're doing great so far. Are you ready to get this show on the road? I'm ready. Then let's get ready to schmodown. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing first. Gosh. With a record of zero and zero, nice. hailing from the great Canadian north of the wall Baby province driver. of somewhere. Oh, that's right. Shows like the OA, the guest, and of course, the Tooth Fairy. Please welcome in his debut. That's the one he's playing in the car while they're the in the yeah. yeah. The kid. Got yeah, some good hat skills there. It's nice bringing your hat skills to the schmodown. Don't see that too often. Someone bringing a pure not sure why. <laughs> Look at that wholesomeness. I'm nothing if not pure. Yes. I just, I, you know, I want to throw him over my shoulder. It's a little TMI. But we have to get to a schmodown here. And his opponent. Representing the fan leagues with a record of zero and zero. Welcome to the stage, Prime Time Paul Oyama. Wow, that looks like that would be really hot to wear under the lights. I mean, that's like only like one step above like 
Eddie Murphy's like rubber leather Gosh. costume from Raw. Looks so much better. <laughs> a lot less squeaky. Can't see his eyes. Paul is now up on the desk, as is Brendan. Gentlemen, you are making your debuts here in the movie trivia showdown. So, on behalf of Danielle and everybody here involved with the movie trivia showdown, welcome to the loser. Do not let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. <laughs> Paul, how are you feeling? I'm excited to play Jason Mraz over here. <laughs> I do like that line a That's lot. That's really great. Yeah. That's the hat. Well, he's Tommy yours for the shooting. I wish I wrote that. I mean, you know, a talented performer. Uh, Brendan, you've been in this studio a number of times. How does it feel to be under the white hot spotlight now? It feels awesome. It feels cool. Yeah, it's awesome. I've never seen the room from this angle before. And Danielle, are you feeling ready? I am feeling ready. Brendan, you ready? I'm ready. Paul, you ready? Set your clocks, prime time, baby. And now it's time to say the line correctly. <laughs> Let's get ready to show It works. I mean, all right, I hope he loses now. <laughs> and running, Dania. I'm just kidding. I'm playing well, first question in the movie <laughs> trivia showdown in the category of action adventure. Question number one: Which rapper starred alongside Jennifer Lopez in Anaconda? And we are, you are off. You are friend or foe of snakes. <sighs> I am friend to all living creatures. <laughs> Feels so good knowing small. the answer. Five, four, three, two, one. That's a good guessing. Paul. Ice Cube. It is, in fact, Ice Cube. Does Brendan Meyer have it? I had iced tea. Hey. Oh, that was the wrong ice. Close. It is Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Was in there. Brendan in an early 0 to 1 hole. We move on to your next question. That is going to be the world of movie release dates. Movie release dates. Oh. Your question is, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets was released in what year? Mm. Favorite Harry Potter movie. That's the called. second one. Yeah. That one? Is, is it Chamber of Secrets? No. Oh, no. I can't Definitely remember what happens. Two. Five, Ooh. four, three, like watching two. Uh, <laughs> uh. Fence now, we go to Brandon. 2002? It was, in fact, 2002. Oh, Get to dang the point it, I messed Paul it up, 03. 2002, oh, I put three. I was on the fence between 02 and 2001. I know the first one was 2001, right? Like, no, the first one was like 99. Was it? 99, 2000. It was right on the cusp of 99. Same as Phantom Menace, then. Yeah. <laughs> Shaking some of that nerves off. I appreciate that. Question number three in the category of animated. Jamie Bell, Andy Serkis, and Daniel Craig all lend their voice to what... 2011 adventure film. Need the full title here, gents. Uh, Jamie Bell, Andy Circus, Daniel Craig. I'd ask you for uh, Mary F. Kill, but now oh, we go to five, four, three, two. You needed the whole one, title, huh? Down to Mr. Uyama. The Adventures of Tintin. It is The Adventures of Tintin. Oh. Have it. The Adventures of Tintin? He had The Adventures, right. adventures of Tintin. No, I didn't have that one. Sort of some title with a unicorn in there. You got the adventures <laughs> of Tintin. It only made one of them. We'll take it. Yeah. This category, yep. gents, comes from the world sense. of Oscar movies, a potential string for both competitors. Your query is, what Oscar-nominated 2014 film featured Benedict oh. Cumberbatch and had a tagline, behind oh. every code is an enigma? Oh, what was yes. that? Got it. Oh. It's an enigma. Oh, jeez. Got it. Captain of Mystery. Edward E. Nickma. Five, five, four, three, it's on two. Netflix. Was that the one, one where he played? Uh, down, we go to Brandon first. Yep. The imitation, imitation game. game. It is the imitation yeah. game. The call habit. Imitation game. Dang, Dang it. Some oh, here's the question. I just put imitation game. Is it the imitation game? You know, I put Adventures of Ten Ten, and I gave it to myself. So, moves. yeah. I don't think there's an imitation <laughs> game separate from <laughs> the imitation game. So, adorable. Your next category will be asked by Danielle, and it comes from the world of fantasy science fiction. Who directed Blade Runner 2049? Oh, well, I know that one. Yeah. Spell it. it. Took me like 36 years to see the first Blade Runner. Oh, oh no, that's yeah. right. Five, I've heard it's good. Four record. That's great. Three, two, Hurry. one. Pens down, Paul. Denis Villeneuve. It is Denis Villeneuve. Fellow Canadian, Denis Villeneuve. There Close you enough. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't finish it. Denis Villeneuve. All right, so I'll leave that up to you. Credit, yes or no? <laughs> According to Schmodown rules, that's not a, that's not a credit. Of comedies. Uh, comedies. All right. Dang it. Just had to be quicker on it. Gretchen Wieners, the princess of toaster pastry in Mean Girls. Gretchen was. Uh, that was. Uh, what's her name? Yeah. Mean Girls, an all-time classic in some people's eyes. Mm, so, I'm, I'm not getting her name. I I've seen her face. I, I see her face too. Three, 
Two, oh, she was one, in Party of Five. Now we go to Brendan. Was it Amanda Seyfried? No. It was no. not oh, Amanda Seyfried. I, I think I missed it too. Rachel Bilson. No. We're looking no. for Lacey Chabert. Oh, that's it. Yep. It's between the two of them. Lacey Chabert. 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 None for this. <laughs> French. It's still four to four though, so it's anyone's I was originally talking, yeah, writing down uh, Ridley Scott. This, this Blade Runner. I was like, oh no, wait, that was Denny. Yep. Sarah Michelle Gellar and Bill Pullman star in what? 2004 horror film. Well, you got this one. Um, yeah. I think of Bill Pullman. I think of one of two worlds. I go to Lone Star from Spaceballs. Yes. And then obviously the president. Mm -hmm. the best president we've ever had. I don't know. I'm just going to write something down. Four. Four. I'm not going to be right. Three, two, one. Pens down. We go to Paul. I believe that is the grudge. It wasn't. Oh, yeah. Grudge, yeah. Like I feel dumb now. This is the grudge. Just put the fog. Jackson Pullman, Pullman Paxton. No. I don't think either one of those were in the fog. No. That's the only thing that's coming to my mind. I feel dumb now with the grudge. question in round number one. And this is a patriotic question. The following question comes to you from Michael Campbell. Thank you, Michael, for supporting the show. Thanks, Michael Campbell. Good job, Michael Campbell. We like your suit. He shares the name with Tom Petty, the Heartbreakers guitarist, also named Michael Campbell. Michael, your question Michael is, is better. Well, yeah. this is y'all's question. Michael won in the category of dramas. <laughs> it's better than his and razors. It is Andy Kirsten Schick. Dunst and Jay Hernandez star in this 2001 teen romance film. Jay Hernandez. Um, Jay Hernandez was in that. You can start to feel the tension. The competitors realizing, hey, we're 2001 really teen Five, romance. Four. Three, I'm gonna feel dumb on this two, one too. I don't got it. One, need pens down. What do you have, Brendan? Say the last dance. It is no, not say no. the last dance. That'd be crazy beautiful. It is oh, crazy beautiful. yeah. Oh, yeah. I put like bring it on. I don't feel dumb because I don't remember that. Crazy beautiful. Yeah, so I remember crazy beautiful, crazy beautiful now. One, Paul comes no, it wasn't say the last dance. Say the last dance was once or twice. Yeah, Julia Stiles. Yeah. Just slightly yep. six to four. Neither one pitching a perfect round, so no need for a bonus question. As we move right to Oof. round number two, <laughs> this is known as the wheel round, the wheel of fate, and just and perhaps Browns. one competitor's doom in right now, Danielle, because this entire wheel has been sponsored by another one of our movie trivia show sure. patrons. That would be Jeremy Hastings. Oh, JTH. Thank you. JTH. Jeremy Hastings, a longtime fan. He sponsored the entire I know him from Facebook. to make it known to us and everybody out there that Jeremy is sponsoring this wheel on behalf of all Schmodown reactors. So thank you, Jeremy, and thank you for all of the incredible <laughs> We did not rehearse that. <laughs> that was awesome. Enjoy enjoyment, Danielle and I are going to react to you for two seconds. Ready? Go. <gasps> what? And that that wasn't in the book. That was a hell of a job, Danielle. We should do trailer reactions together. I was reacting to them reacting. Oh, yeah, I had a late reaction. In the yeah. lead, so it is six to four if I had a nickel for every time I first heard them. to your opponent. Be my guest, kid. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm a little bit of that confidence yeah. coming through. Right. Good for the pigs. Who said that? Get out here. GTH would not do that. No, GTH is good for the wheel. Brendan is going to spin. Is it going to be modern? It modern is classics. Be modern classics. Back to the future. He's a young that Shawshank? He's spin yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Spinning away. It's odd to see anybody spin away from the wheel. <laughs> it is Shawshank. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have the poster on the wall over here. You can't see it, but it's oh, look at that. Yeah. It's the same exact image. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be cheap if they ask us a tagline for Shawshank. Yeah. <laughs> Fear can hold Festival you prisoner, darlings. hope can set you free. Got it. All right, Brennan is Easy point. Festival Darlings. Brennan, I will be administering Ooh. the got Festival Darlings. Too, oh, we're stuck with modern <laughs> classics. Yep. Are you confident in your ability with Festival Darlings? Uh, well, I, I feel good about it, but I know it's a strength of his, so that's what I'm worried about. But I do feel good about my own abilities in it. That was, is a... uh, was the Tooth Fairy ever in a film festival? <laughs> I, I got nothing. <laughs> All right. Your question. <laughs> like, so I'm talking about that. The first of four. In Wes Anderson's film Moonrise Ooh. Kingdom, who plays uh, Scoutmaster Edward Norton. Randy Ward? Edward Norton. Give him two points. I love that movie. I just happen to know. So you see on the the graphic at the bottom, Oyama comes from the fan leagues. He comes from Canada. <laughs> That's awesome. Who played Detective David Tapp in 2004's um, Saw? Danny Glover. Oh. I'm getting too uh, old for this. Donnie Wahlberg? That is incorrect oh. for the steal. Danny Glover. 
Bill Paxson. I got nothing. It's not Bill Paxson looking for Danny Glover. Oh, Danny Glover. Question me on Saw. I saw oh, Saw. I saw all the <laughs> Saws. <laughs> you're, you're so encouraging up here on the Even the bad ones. We need more like you in the world. All right, Brennan, you're halfway through. You got one correct. You got two points to show for. You are currently tied with prime time. Your next query is... The rural areas of what Midwestern state supply the setting for 2010's Winter's Bone? Is it, is it what, what state? Or the rural, the, well, it's the Ozarks. Yeah, uh, but what's we need the state? state? state. Yes. California. That is in oh, It's not a Midwest. It is oh, Missouri. Oh, no. oh yeah, I got it. So I thought I didn't know it was the geography trivia schmodown. Oh, yeah. I would have studied, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my being a Canadian doesn't work for so you. That's what Ozark I was thinking. Is it it's United <laughs> States? But he wrote in Canada. Maybe doesn't know Missouri as well. I don't know Missouri either. And I've Missouri's lived here pretty much my whole life. So. Okay, so Paul, that's a huge steal. So now Brendan needs to get this one right without the end multiple choice to tie Paul. Although if you need it, we can provide that for you. Brendan, your last question is, what 90s film about a writer had the tagline, between heaven and hell, there's always Hollywood? 90s movie about a writer. 90s movie. Man. You want to ask for multiple? Yeah, I'm going to ask for multiple on this one. All right. Is it A, Trumbo, B, no. Adaptation, C, Barton Fink, or D, The Ghost Writer? Yeah, Barton Fink. It is Barton Fink. Yeah, no, Adaptation oh, was so 2000s. Well, yeah, okay. What the performance by Brendan Meyer? It wasn't a category he felt particularly good about, but he, 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 he was... Did all right. He Trumbo was, was much later. Also, yeah, that was 2010. So is that gap? Steal, that steal That's game, huh? could come back to haunt Brendan Meyer. Absolutely, but I believe, with that face, is anything haunting? Uh, he sees dead people. Okay, prime time, it's your turn to spin. Head on up there. Classic. This is prime time first day. He's been waiting for this a long time. But... That's a very confident this side of the camera. That is a man who believes he can control the wheel. Can he, in fact, do it? It is going to land on director, and he's walking right back. He is going to take Doing no hesitation. He is feeling good about directors, all right? Uh, all right, like then. Like Brendan had probably going to get four questions in this round. Danielle will be administering them, and I'm going to pull up the D word right now. Question one. Who wrote and directed The Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> Frank Darabont. <laughs> Who wrote and directed The Shawshank Redemption? Five, I need new glasses. Four, now, the thing three, is, is that's my on. favorite movie of all time, so I would have known you're not even looking at that it. That is but... correct for two points. Yeah. <laughs> and I need new glasses, so I actually can't see the it. Green yeah. The Green Mile. After his first question. Question two. Which film marked David Lynch's feature film directorial debut? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, isn't that Eraserhead? Well, the lady finished the question, but he did get it right for two points. And Why now are you silencing sudden, women? It's a <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. Jokes. Don't put that juju on me. <laughs> that was amazing. Took my breath away. I, Number three. Your who directed 2017's biographical war drama, Darkest Hour? Joe Bright. <laughs> The kid knows Jeez. his director. Jeez. That's why he chose to go with directors. He has not missed yet. We are seeing something round. very special. It could be something special for a long time. Number four. The screenplay for Rambo First Blood Part 2 was written by Sylvester Stallone and which other famous director? John G. Avelson? Does he know it? Go to five. I'm gonna go multiple on that. Four. Is it yeah. A, Tony Scott? B, for, James Cameron? This is for Rambo C, 2. Oliver mm -hmm. Stone? Or D, Francis Ford Coppola? James Cameron? Uh, I'm gonna say Coppola. That is incorrect, Brendan, for the steal. Let's see the first three again. Uh, we can repeat that for yeah, you. Uh, give him the options one more time, if you would, Daniel. A, Tony Scott? Rambo. B, James Cameron. I don't think it's Oliver C, Stone. Oliver Stone or D, Francis Ford Coppola. Oliver Stone? No. Incorrect. He could have used the point, but he did not get it. It is James Cameron. Hmm. James Cameron. I know that was early for James Cameron. 
Avatar movies. Yeah. And now it is 14 to 7. Paul Oyama, a very impressive thing. It's like more like Terminator two. era. Yeah, spun almost. Directors Terminator was, was 84. Almost Terminator set. era. James uh, Cameron. It was after Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. Prime yeah. time in round number two. Uh, he is doing a fantastic job. What an amazing debut and a great call up. But I Brendan, love watching newbies do such a great job. Still in the job. game. Brendan still is hanging game. in there. And now we go on to round three. This right round here, you know. will determine. <laughs> <laughs> in wow. round number wow. three, each big points. There is no stealing in round number three. Go to you first, Paul, for your numbers because you are currently enjoying a seven point advantage. Eight, 17, and three. All right, eight, 17, and three. And Brendan, when you are ready, I will accept your numbers as well. Uh, one, nine, and four. One, Nine Those are all four. numbers okay, that they picked. I'll be asking you your questions, Paul. You're going to hear your questions from Danielle. But before we get to Paul's questions, Brendan has some if points. We get to Paul's questions. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Brendan, you trail by seven. How's it been so far in your Schmodown debut? It's been pretty good. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. Didn't go quite how I imagined in my head, but, uh, you know, I'm here. I'm totally doing well. You've handled yourself very well, sir. And now you're in round three. Your first question in the world of thrillers. Mm -hmm. These are thrillers for two points. The question is, who directed Prisoners? Oh, oh. Um, Denis Villeneuve. The same guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the same guy. Denis Villeneuve. The kid got lucky with a Canadian question. Was it really? No. Right. Them James Cameron. Facts. That's right. As long as it doesn't happen in Missouri, Brendan is good to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't Brendan. ask me where Prisoners took place, okay? <laughs> Your next question uh, for three points. Where did Prisoners take place? It is going to be in the world of Tom Cruise. Tom right. Cruise films. And your question is, who is Tom Cruise's co-lead, Malcolm Beach, in Oblivion? Morgan Freeman? I know Morgan Freeman's in that. His co- uh, Morgan Freeman? It is Morgan yeah. Freeman for three points. You all said it the same way you did, too. Sudden, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I met Tom Cruise around 1938, ever since I was a little boy, <laughs> people have been enjoying the sound of my voice. I didn't think much of Tom Cruise when I first saw him, looked like a stiff breeze to blow him over. Enough Shawshank. <laughs> Said no one ever. And Brendan, it might have been a fortuitous selection because I'm pretty sure you were alive in this decade. This is from the land of the 2010s. I, I was. I was very That's when the Tooth Fairy came out. Actually, as well. <laughs> the tooth fairy came you keep out. bringing that up. Tooth Fairy starred <laughs> which wrestler? Right. And your question yeah. is. That'd be funny. In 2014's comedy hit Neighbors, mm -hmm. who plays the college dean, Carol Gladstone? Lisa Kudrow? Yes. Yeah. We have a new lead. <laughs> yes. And oh, give it away. Brendan got that one correct. Got this, a three point she got all three correct in round three. That's, Stepping up to the plate when he needed that's good for your debut. Now, it's going to be prime time's turn to answer. No, well, we got your questions after all, huh? That's your questions after all. That's like watching a baby curse. It feels weird. <laughs> Okay, prime time. I'll, I'll take the shot. I'm probably gonna lose, so I feel like that's uh, I gotta take the moral victory. Prime time, your two-point question it is gonna come from the world of 90s movies and will be administered by Miss Radford. Who plays Walter Subcheck in the Big Lebowski? Uh, yeah. John, John Goodman. Goodman. Get him two points. And now he's got You're two out of your element, to answer. Yeah. He only needs to get one of them right, and he We'll move on. The pressure is on. Okay, Paul. It's going to come from number 17 was your next pick for three points. And that is going to come from the world of Judd Apatow mm. movies. Who played the eBay customer in 40-year-old version Jonah Hill. who wants to buy boots Got with it. goldfish in them? Jonah Hill. And your winner. And your winner. There it is. I was really hoping he was going to debut as a face, though, to be a nice counterpoint to Chance, but apparently everyone likes playing the villain. The villains always have more fun. Yes. Ask an Andrew guy. 
I'm afraid uh, he'll tackle point, me into something I if I do. Do not see him going any more humble. <laughs> do it um, on Facebook. It turns out when you have a fantastic <laughs> debut as both of these gentlemen have, um, that can be something that you take home with you. Yeah, so wins. I just don't see... If, you, if you're victorious in the movie Trivia Schmodown, does not tend to make one more humble. More it humble. only no. goes the other way. Well, we are now going to hear from both the winner and the loser in an exclusive interview. Take it away. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Emma Fife, your team and inner geekdom league commissioner here with the victorious Paul Oyama. Now, Paul, how are you feeling after your match today? Look, Emma, I told you so. You know, people were questioning if, if I would, how I would play in this league, and sure. he's too young, and blah, 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 but I wasn't too young to answer those questions, and I'm not too young to steamroll through whoever's next. I mean, listen, it, it, it's definitely a little bit different. Obviously, you are undefeated in the fan league, and now thus far undefe undefeated in the actual movie trivia Schmodown league, but it is definitely different playing at home and playing under the lights. Would you agree? Just getting some nods. Say so. I mean, kind of. Okay. There are questions about movie trivia. You could ask me about them in the middle of a lake, and I would still win, so it doesn't really sure. matter to me. Great. Well, I mean, you know, in that first round, you guys were neck and neck, and then it was in the second round that you really shined there. Were you thrilled with the director's category? I mean, you kind of just spun the wheel and walked away, This continuing this trend of a very, very confident attitude. That's the word, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I was thrilled specifically with directors. I mean, I'm just thrilled with a movie trivia category. It doesn't really matter what the category is. I think I'm perfectly fine with whatever I roll with. Sure. Great. Excellent. Well, uh, again, you uh, now remain with an undefeated record across the board, be it in the fan league or in the actual league. So what's your plan going forward? I mean, whoever's on the warpath, you know, and there's uh, all these old dogs walking around talking about they got so much experience and so many wins. And, and you know, you got Dan Merle and Irwin and Roca and all these guys and their time's up. So you're saying that they're old? <laughs> I mean, we know they're old, but I'm saying they're old and about to lose. That's that's my point. Okay. So let's take a moment to talk about Chance Ellison. Oh, is that the little weak dog I saw limping on the side of the highway wow, over there? Wow, you really just think everyone is a dog. I mean, they're... specifically him. Um, he, he's, still, he's on too. I mean, I don't. is he relevant to me? Um, I mean, if I got to play him, I'll play him. He's He's been running for me long enough, but yeah, if we play, I mean, I feel bad. I might have to send him back to, to little Mikey over there and his sheep. Wow, those are some strong words from someone who I think maybe you were friends with at some point. You both came from the fan league. I don't know. As we've seen here in the Schmodown, there's really no loyalty amongst friends. Well, congratulations again, Paul, on your What's win your today. Face? I look forward to seeing what you do in the future, I think. We'll be right back. And we are back with Brendan the Kid Meyer. Brendan, it just didn't quite work out for you today. I mean, listen, I think it was a little harsh considering that there was a very specific question about the geography of the United States. I, you are uh, I am not. I know. I know. So. I'm glad that wasn't on my green card application. <laughs> so that was, it was good. No, Brendan, <laughs> you did great in round one. You were really, you, you know, you and Paul were going toe to toe and then Round two came around and you just played a little too aggressively. Yeah, you know, I, I felt actually good about the first round. I mean, to be honest, four uh, is a little bit low. I think I usually am about five or six. Yeah. So I felt great about being only two back of him with four. I really thought, I, if you would have told me before four, I would have thought I would be a little bit further behind him. Uh, so I felt pretty good about that. Too bad about that Mean Girls one because I, I kind of went back and yeah. forth. With, I did actually think about Lacey Chabert. That was my other one. Um, and uh, yeah, the second round, I think I just kind of played a little too... I, I just a little too aggressive and and yeah. I, but a lot of those questions I just there there really weren't a lot that I they knew I, I knew there were Norton one but I think the biggest mistake I sure. made is just not going multiple on that uh, that Ozarks one. It can be something that is hard to remember I think when you first start playing in the showdown that totally. in round two you do have that multiple choice option. Oh totally totally I just I I, I just. Yeah, but for some reason, and I have no idea why, but California and Ozarks were like joined together in my head. And, guess uh, you didn't read a little, uh, lot of Little House on the Prairie books growing up, not, so you didn't not. know where the Ozarks but, were. Yeah, but you know what? I was even having a blast. And you know, after the second round, I really, and you know, I had so many strengths on that wheel and couldn't get any of them. I, there's so he many talks things fast. on there I feel good about. And Do you regret spinning away from modern classics? I don't, no, not really, because I would say that I feel similar about modern classics okay. and Festival Darlings. There were just, I would say, I mean, I guess I necessarily don't want to say necessarily what they are. No, you gotta keep your but secrets, But there are man. definitely three other categories categories in that wheel that I would have been thrilled to to have had instead. Um, so I was kind of going for those. And then I was still having a great time though. Yeah. Like, I was having so much fun and so happy with how the third oh, round yeah, went. Oh yeah, so happy. I mean, listen
listen, the Canadians came through for you there. It, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, there was something going on there. Yeah, I, uh, look, I'm so happy that I avoided the knockout. I think that, that, I, I, I feel pretty good about 17, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I feel okay about that. I don't think it's enough to beat someone like Paul. Sure. Uh, I don't think that's enough, but I think I can do better than that, and I'm happy with that for a first show. Yeah, I think you can definitely leave here today with your head held high, and obviously you have a great attitude. You, you played great up there, and everybody just fell in love with you, so. Yeah, I, I, had, I had a lot of fun, and I, like I said, I'm so happy with how the third round went, but I was even having a great time um, in the second round at, when I knew that I <laughs> well, was not going the way I wanted and that I could have done so much better, so overall I'm very happy with how it went. Listen, I, that good. is a great attitude yes. to have. That is the kind of attitude we yes. want in teams and in yeah. geekdom. If you have any interest in playing in those leagues, uh, I as the commissioner <laughs> would love to have you. But uh, I would. I mean, doing teams would be a real thrill for me. Inner geekdom, I think, would be would be a disaster. But I, 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 that would be that would be. Listen, you can bad. study. You can make binders yeah. with infographics. I'm looking at you, Mike Kalinowski. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, really fantastic job today, and we hope to see you again in the Schmodown in some capacity. Thanks. I really appreciate the opportunity, and I hope I get another chance. Well, thank you so much, Thanks. Brendan. Good job today. Thanks. And now back to you, Mark and Danielle. All right, well, Danielle, you see that in that wonderful interview by Emma Fife. We're watching Paulo Yama, and primetime is pretty much challenging everyone in the league, but particularly Chance Ellison, his old fan league enemy. This is definitely personal. They have brought this beef up through their call-ups. I'm excited to see what mm. happens. And then Brendan oh, Meyer, look, I, I, I root for the kid. He's such a nice guy, and I think he's going to be back in, in, in the face of a lot of confidence from Paul, a lot of knowledge from Paul. I think Brendan held up okay, and I look forward to seeing more from him as well. Many other competitors would have been intimidated having faced that much, let's be frank, arrogance and cockiness on their first <laughs> match, um, but he brought it very spectacularly while keeping it pretty darn wholesome. Well, we welcome two new competitors into the league. And how about another hand for Danielle Radford making her debut on the answer desk. Hope to have a whole lot more of you in the league this year. Such a great debut. Thank you so much for joining us. Really quick, where can all the kids out there follow you on the social media? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Danielle Radford. You can find me on Instagram at Danielle underscore Radford. Someone else got there first. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> if you like, I have a Patreon where we do things like uh, live chat wrestling. Um, I'm a huge wrestling fan, so you can also find me on my podcast Tights and Fights where I discuss wrestling weekly. If you're a Tights wrestling fan, fights. you probably are a Schmodown fan. And on the subject of Schmodown, you can check out our website, TriviaSD.com. That's where you go for all the latest information for future live events. You can get tickets that way. And check out our movie, Trivia Schmodown, Patreon today. You heard us talk about patrons here. Check out which tier is right for you. We are so happy to have you in the Schmoes No family. Now the movie Trivia Schmodown channel on YouTube. Subscribe right here and never miss another Schmodown match for Daniel Radford and Christian Harloff, I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, and we'll see you real soon around the movie Trivia Schmodown. <laughs>
It's, it's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll talk. I went over not well. Okay, so... I went over about as well as you can imagine it would. Yeah. <sighs> Is Bateman going to be in the Horseman? I don't think Roka's too happy about that. I think we'll find out at yeah. some point. Uh, and does that also mean Dagnino? Again, we'll find out at some point. Yeah. Oof. So for this match, uh, Paul won, but man. What a mouth. Ooh, that kid's got some arrogance what on a him. Cocky son of a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, I was kind of hoping that he was going to jump in here as a face and so that there would be a nice face versus heel kind of battle but He's between. more of a heel than Ellison is. Yeah. I'm... <sighs> I'm, all of a sudden, guess what? I'm rooting for Ellison now. He makes Ellison look like Ethan Irwin. Whew. Jeez. And um, Ethan Irwin, you saw what he did to Jay, so. Uh -huh. I don't know. Um, that, Paul's, Paul knows his stuff. I think I think it's always better to, uh, you know, sure, we know you know your stuff through the family. I think it's always better to kind of get two or three matches and dominate those two or three matches and then be like, all right, I'm here to play. Yeah. And then start your run, you know, calling out the entire league. But kind of reminds me of, uh, oh, what's her face from last season that went up against the Patreon. Oh, you're talking about uh, Rosie Knight. Yes. Yeah. But she came in like mouth of Blaren. And where's she at? We haven't heard from her. Uh, she, she might come back here at some point, but. Yeah, but I mean, almost the same thing. She came in just flapping at the lip, and yeah. So I don't know what what we're gonna see in the future from Paul. It's probably more poor, probably more wins. Uh, Brendan, on the other hand, looks like he's having a, a lot of fun up there. I'm uh, expecting more wins from him too. Mm-hmm. Well. Kind of curious as to what those other three categories he could have spun that he would have been very comfortable with. So yeah, we'll see if he plays again, if he gets those categories, and if he can dominate. Yep, that's true. And then once again, I called it on Roxy taking over for Emma. It just made too much sense. Yep. Because all she's got right now is Adam Gertler, and I think he's busy. Yeah. Feeling bad about breaking Mike Kalinowski. Probably. He's probably cooking something. That's true. We want to thank you guys for joining us for this reaction. If you liked what we did here, drop us a like, drop us a comment. Check out the actual Schmodown over on the Movie Trivia Schmodown page and become a patron for them. It's like a dollar a month at least, so it's worth it. And you can get all the Energeekdom and Teams early like we did earlier this week. Yeah, so subscribe over there to the Schmodown page and then subscribe up top to us. You can do that right there. Check out some of our other videos over there. And as always, get busy living or get busy dying. Oh yeah, wiser words were never spoken. Later. Morgan Freeman. Why are these cocky people always wearing sunglasses? It's getting annoying. Hey, I wear sunglasses. I said what I said.